Hello and welcome everyone to Moldex3D, a simulation software that will allow you to mitigate or replicate your molding challenges in the virtual world. My name is Alex Baker, and in this demo, we'll be going through the procedure of using Moldex3D CAD Doctor and Moldex3D Studio 2020 to get you started on your molding simulation journey. We'll start out by using CAD Doctor. CAD Doctor is a translational software from your CAD system to Moldex3D. Traditionally, when you export a file from your CAD system over to Moldex3D, there's going to be tolerancing differences that will inhibit the model from meshing properly in our Moldex3D software. So we use CAD Doctor as a means to mitigate those sorts of issues. We can open up CAD Doctor as a standalone program. Once we have CAD Doctor open, it's simply a five-step procedure to fix our model and move on to Moldex 3D Studio. The first of those five buttons is going to be the import button. The import will allow us to find any sort of file that we want to import into Moldex 3D. Traditionally, we like to use step files because step files come in the cleanest. Once the file is imported, you can rotate around using right-click drag, and you can zoom in and zoom out using your middle mouse scroll. The second of five buttons that we're going to click is the check button. The check button will run a 16 step checking procedure that will allow you to identify all of the different errors that are coming out of your CAD system. Keep in mind that these errors aren't necessarily from the CAD model itself, but from the translation between your CAD system and Moldex 3D. The third button that we would click is auto stitch. Auto stitch is linked directly with an error called loop of free edges. Loop of free edges is an error that occurs when two surfaces are dissociated or if a surface is completely missing. In this case, we don't have any loops of free edges and therefore the auto stitch tool is grayed out. If you do have loops of free edges, I recommend that you use this tool to try and stitch back th together the surfaces. The fourth button that we're gonna click is auto heal. Auto heal is going to allow us to fix everything that is not loose but free edges. After you've used the auto heal function, the last button we need to click is export. Export will allow us to save a Moldex 3D specific file type, which we call MDXSF. After we've exported the MDXSF file, we can simply close out of CAD Doctor. Once we're done with CAD Doctor, we can move over to Moldex 3D Studio 2020 where we're going to do the rest of our modeling, meshing, simulation, and result interpretation. When we open up Studio, there's going to be two options. We have New and Open. In this case, we're just going to be creating a new project, but if you have a simulation already run, you can use the Open. When you create a new simulation, it will ask you for two things. The first one is the name. The second one is the location. The name will always have the template, MDX project with the date. I always recommend to change this. The location will be based on your default save location, which was probably set during the installation of Moldex 3D. Once you've created your project, you'll see that the interface changes slightly, and now there's a ribbon going across the top of your screen. We'll be going from left to right across this ribbon to follow the procedure of Moldex 3D Studio. The first button allows you to create a run. Now, Moldex 3D automatically creates the first run for us, so we don't really have to worry about that. We don't need to click anything here because the first run is created for us automatically. The next button, Molding Type, allows us to see all of the different types of molding processes that Moldex 3D offers. We'll be using injection molding for this demo, but you can see a bunch of different advanced processes that are possible in Moldex 3D. The third button here is Import Geometry. This is where we're going to import the MDXSF file that we saved from CAD Doctor. The MDXSF file will come in just like a step file, and you can import other step files using the import geometry one more time. Note that we've transferred automatically from the home tab where we started to the model tab at this point. The second button allows us to check the geometry to see if there are any major problems. Being that we ran this through CAD Doctor, there shouldn't be too many issues. Check geometry checks for two main things. The first one is free edges, which are synonymous with the loop of free edges that we saw in CAD Doctor. The second defect is tiny edge. Just as the name might suggest, 
these are just very small edges on the part. These small features can cause the mesher to refine unnecessarily, and that can cause a mesh disparity issue on occasion. Once I'm done fixing my geometry, I can click exit and move on to the next button, which is attribute. Attribute allows me to assign this part so that the simulation knows what this part is supposed to mean as far as the simulation is concerned. I'm gonna click attribute, and I'm going to select my geometry by left clicking on it. Then I'm gonna click on the attribute dropdown and click part. That will change the color slightly from a gray color to a beige color, indicating that this object is now assigned properly. All objects coming into Mold X3D will be assigned as a none attribution. Moving on to the right of model thickness, we have the gate. The gate is very important because it's going to allow us to assign where the plastic flow is going to start from. So using the gate function, we're just going to hover over a surface on our geometry and using left click, we're going to select a surface and the gate is going to be created normal to that surface. The size of this gate is going to be dependent on the gate parameter. You can increase or decrease the size of this gate. Press the green check mark to finish out that function. And then the melt entrance function allows us to assign where the melt is actually going to start from. If we use the automatic gate function, this melt entrance will be placed automatically. This red arrow is, allows us to assign where the plastic flow is actually going to begin. As far as simulation is concerned, I could just stop here. I don't have to make my simulation really complicated to get simple results. If I just want to see the filling of the part, I can just stop here and begin meshing. However, if I want to see the final shape of the part coming out of the mold, I need some sort of realistic heat transfer. To get realistic heat transfer, I need to create a cooling system. The first step of creating a cooling system is creating a volume through which heat to transfer. We call this a mold base. It is essentially just going to be a box that encapsulates all of our mold components, which in this case are just the part and the runner. You can press the green check mark to finish out the mold base function. Now that we have a medium for heat to transfer through, now we can assign a cooling system. You can either import your cooling system from your real mold design, or you can create a cooling system using Mold X3D's wizard. Using the wizard, we assign our cooling channel attributes using five parameters. The first of which is the channel direction. The second parameter is the diameter of your cooling channels. N is the number of cooling channels on the top and bottom. So in this case, we have eight and reduce it to four. C is the pitch or the distance between the cooling channel centers. And then H is the distance from the cooling channels to the top or bottom most surface of the part. Once we're done with the cooling channel wizard, it will create the inlets and outlets on our cooling channels indicated by a dark blue arrow and a cyan arrow. Check cooling system allows us to make sure that there's no obvious problems with our geometry. And once we get the message at the bottom left corner saying check cooling system OK, we're all right to move on to the meshing stage. To move on to meshing, we're going to go from the model tab over to the mesh tab. And again, we're going to continue on from left to right across our screen. The first thing we're going to do is select the meshing type. Mold X3D houses two different styles of meshing. At this point, we almost always recommend to use the solid procedure, if at all possible. The solid option allows us to create a higher quality mesh that also allows us to get a lower computation time. Next to the right of that is generate. When you press generate, you may get a message saying that there's geometry defects detected. Being that we ran this through CAD Doctor and we already checked our geometry, we're already aware of all the geometry defects and we can click now here. The generate function allows us to see the sequence that the mesher is going to use for the different attributions across our mold. You can see it's going to start with what's called a surface mesh, which is going to convert all of the surfaces of our geometry into a series of triangular surface mesh elements. Then we move on to the solid mesh, then we move on to the runner, then the cooling channels, and then finally the mold base, which will be just a block of mesh with all of the other components of our mold cut into it. In this case, I'm going to trust all the defaults that Mold X30 gives me, and I'm just going to click Generate.
Once the mesh is finished, I can click Final Check to move on to the rest of my simulation. Once our mesh is completed, we can move on to the material selection, where we'll go into the Mold X3D Material Wizard, and we can find our material. You can go right click Add to Project to add a material, or you can go Material Find to find a material based on specific attributions. Once you've selected your material, you can go to the Project tab to confirm that that material is in fact added, and then you can close out of the Material Wizard. You'll see that once you close out of the Material Wizard, the material will be loaded into your project automatically, and a default process will be created. You can modify the process based on your process sheet, or you can trust the defaults from Mold x 3 d if this is a preliminary simulation. Moving on to the right of that, we have the Analysis button, which will allow us to assign the type of simulation we want to run. And there's four different types of simulations that are traditionally run with Mold x 3 d the first of which is the filling analysis. The filling analysis just allows you to see the floor progression of the, of the plastic throughout your geometry. Filling and packing allows you to see how your gate is actually packing the material into the part. Transient analysis 3 is our warpage analysis that allows us to see what the geometry is going to look like after the molding process is completed. And then finally, quick flow, which is the most simplistic simulation we can run which allows us to simply just see the flow progression throughout our geometry without any other complex calculations. This simulation runs very quickly and is very good for a preliminary analysis to see how the materials are going to spread out through your geometry. For this simulation, we're going to use a warpage analysis, transient analysis 3, because we have a cooling system assigned in our simulation. Once you've assigned your analysis sequence, you can trust the computation parameters and move straight to the computing manager. By default, it may show run, but we're going to use computing manager, which will allow us to assign the task number. The task number is going to correlate to the number of cores that you want to use on your computer. And the number of cores is going to impact the speed of your calculation. More cores will mean that the simulation runs faster. These are the system requirements for using Mold x 30 and we recommend to follow these to get the best performance out of the software. Once you're satisfied with your task number, you can click Submit, and that will submit your analysis. After the simulation is completed, you should see that the status says Finish, and if there are any issues, then it will note that in the Status column. You can expand the run to see all of the different sequence steps of the simulation. For reference, on a three-core simulation, this simulation took about three hours. Once the simulation is completed, we can go straight back to the interface, and to access the results, which have been downloaded automatically, you can go over to the simulation tree, which is right underneath the new run button in the interface. And you can open, for example, filling to see the various results that are output by Mold x 3 d To see the results a little bit better, you can go over to the model tree, and you can turn off all the components that are not the part by deselecting the radio buttons. If you can continue from left to right on your interface, past the computing managers, the result button, and that will bring you to all of the result interpretation tools. To play the animation of the melt front, you can press the play button. You can also view this result in different ways using the inspection tools. Something like the isocontour will allow you to see the result in a different way. And in addition to color plots, we also have results like XY plots. If you go all the way down to the bottom of the filling results, in the XY curve you can see something like sprue pressure, which will allow you to see the pressure of the melt front from the sprue. To exit out of the graph, all you have to do is click on the red X up in the top right corner. And to exit out of our animation, we can just simply click on Stop. If you have any questions about future events or have any questions about the procedure of Mold x 3 d please comment on this video and leave a like if you'd like to see more demo videos like this in the future. Thank you and go beyond simulation with Mold x 3 d